Hello, everybody, and welcome to Project HR, a podcast dedicated to building better workplaces. Project HR is brought to you by Projections, North America's leading provider of employee communication resources, including video, websites, e-learning, social media, and virtual events to help you connect with your team. For more information, you can visit us online at projectionsinc.com. I'm Jennifer Oroqua, COO of Projections, and your host for today's episode of Project HR. Now, people love games and getting rewarded for their efforts, from Boy Scout badges to s green stamps to frequent flyer programs. The marketing and motivational potential of games has been proven time and time again. But it wasn't until 2010 that this strategy gained a name, gamification. In recent years, the idea of incorporating gamification into the workplace, specifically within human resources, has gained a lot of traction, and that's what we're going to be focusing on today. In this episode, I'm joined by Mitch Denton. Mitch is an account manager at Archie Learning and a content creator and producer for Gamify. He's written a terrific two-part article for Gamify called Gamification for Dummies, and he's here today to help us better understand how gamification can make a big impact in our workplaces. Mitch, thanks so much for joining me. Hi, Jen. It's it's, uh, good to be here. So I want to get specific. Let's just start out with what exactly is gamification? So the the basic principle of gamification is the application of game mechanics and elements to non-game activities uh, in order to improve user engagement. So gamification has been implemented into a number of industries uh, to improve output from uh, marketing, business, health and fitness, learning, and so on. Uh, In fact, if you're wanting to learn more about gamification, you can Google what is gamification and the first page result will actually show up on Gamify's very own page uh, dedicated to expanding on gamification, uh, providing Mm -hmm. examples in different industries. Um, It's Mm -hmm. a good read. So I, I encourage that. Excellent. We touched a little bit on this on the opening with references to Boy Scout badges and that sort of thing. But mixing games with business is really nothing new. I mean, this isn't something that millennials invented. (laughs) How did that come about? Uh, Yeah, that's right. Um, So the term gamification has been circulating for the last decade or so. Um, The concept itself has existed for as long as we've been a society, really. Um, Hmm. Pretty well for as long as there's been a group of people and a task that needs to get done. uh, We've been trying to gamify the process in order to make what may otherwise be tedious work into a fun and engaging experience. Um, I think gamification has really come into its own in more recent years uh, through the addition of mobile technology uh, in mm-hmm. our everyday lives and just the, mm-hmm. the wide reach modern gaming has. But with, with this wide acceptance of gaming, uh, people have become more open to game mechanics in other parts of their lives as well. Um, so I think that's, that's really why we're seeing a, a lot more of a, a prominent face of gamification these days. So people who are used to more traditional ways of, of training or um, learning might dismiss gamification, seeing it sort of as that spoonful of sugar to help the message go down. Do you think that's true or do you think the process of gamification actually helps with achievement? Uh, I think it can be either, really. In some cases, it really can just be that spoonful of sugar, as you say. Mm-hmm. Uh, this isn't its true purpose, but for short-term projects, um, sometimes that's, that's all that's really required. Um, Mm -hmm. However, the true purpose of gamification is to motivate users to complete an action. This means it really does need to be a framework that helps assist users in achieving certain outcomes long term. So tell me, how does it how does it work? How do we how do we picture this and explain to us how it works? Sure. I mean, depending on the industry, uh, it can take on different forms, but the core principles remain the same. Uh, So you want to be meeting the requirements of human motivation within the familiarity of game mechanics. This means you want to be providing an interactive experience uh, for whatever whatever field it may be, uh, training, work, learning, marketing, whatever it is, uh, with an incentivizing reward for the user and a system in place that will track the user progress uh, and provide Mm -hmm. them real-time feedback to spurn them on. Uh, users t- tend to be a lot more involved in the task at hand when they can clearly see where they are, where they mm. need to be. And mm-hmm. gamification just really helps with that clarity. So beyond the technical aspects of it, which that's the kind of stuff that I kind of geek out on, why does this work? Why do we even care about earning badges or leveling up? I mean, what, what it boils down to is people have fundamental needs and desires. Um, the desire for reward, achievement, competition, uh, social interaction, uh, I, can, I could go on, uh, mm-hmm. but these desires uh, can be met with game elements like points and badges, uh, levels, mm-hmm. leaderboards. 
So all of these things being incorporated into the task at hand, I, I find that that's the thing that really captivates people. Uh, the, the team at Gamify are big fans of the psychologist uh, Martin Seligman. Uh, mm-hmm. He created the PERMA model. It's also known as the happiness model. Uh, mm-hmm. So, so PERMA, PERMA stands for positive emotion, engagement, relationships, meaning, and accomplishments. Um, so we try to make sure in our case that whatever gamified marketing campaign we're developing, uh, we're hitting all five of these points. Um, that, that's mm-hmm. kind of been the thing that's really helped us kind of see success over the years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you and I were talking before we even started recording that uh, that I love marketing, that that's my my passion. So the marketing aspects make complete sense to me. I, I go to Starbucks, I earn rewards points. Mm-hmm. That keeps me engaged with the brand, keeps me coming back to the stores. How, let's talk a little bit about how we can use gamification outside of marketing, like within a business context. I mean, I, I like to think of business gamification as consisting of two main sub, uh, subcategories. The first being gamified learning. Mm-hmm. This comes in the form of onboarding new employees or in educating teams uh, on updated business practices with interactive tutorials, courses, all those types of things. Uh, the second being more gamified operations. This mm-hmm. is the use of game-like systems within teams to help uh, make work feel lighter, also prov- providing immediate feedback systems and encouraging more out of employees. They, they seem to be the, the two main categories that I see with business. Yeah. Okay. So, so what are the benefits of integrating this into our workplaces? Why should we, why should we do this? What can we expect to gain? One of the biggest benefits of integrating gamification into the workplace is its ability to bring about flow state from its users. Mm. So uh, when people have clearly defined goals and objectives, along with an ability to track their progress, all of the uncertainty and randomness is removed from the workplace. This leaves employees obstruction free and able to get into the zone, so to speak, with their workload. The same can also uh, be said for making a game of work. So let's say you work in a sales team that requires you to hit a daily target with lead outreach. Uh, Mm -hmm. It can be a bit daunting, maybe even demotivating to see the workload workload that is set before you. So with a team-wide competition that has reward incentives attached and a social component to the work, um, it suddenly becomes a lot easier to participate in what feels more like a group activity uh, that can challenge you to not only compete with others, but also beat out your own personal records. Um, I, I think that just kind of, that really spurns people on to kind of get more out of their daily work. That is brilliant. I love the idea of gamification moving us into our, our flow state. That's perfect. Yeah. All right, Mitch, we're going to take a quick sponsorship break right now. When we return, we're going to look into how gamification can specifically help human resources reach their goals. So stay with us. Thanks to this week's Project HR sponsor, LaborWise Leadership. LaborWise Leadership provides your frontline leaders with the knowledge they need to help you avoid third party interference in your business. With this powerful online course, you'll teach your leaders how to create greater engagement while remaining union free. Get your free trial at projectionsinc.com slash laborwise. We're back with Mitch Denton of Archie Learning and Gamify. And Mitch, as we're talking about integrating gamification into the workplace, let's address the issue of voluntary participation in a game. Does it cease to be a game if participation is made mandatory? I think giving people the option to buy into a gamified experience yields much much greater results, um, but this doesn't disqualify mandatory participation. So uh, gamified systems in the workplace, while being designed to make wor- workloads more fun and engaging for employees, it's ultimately designed to gain the best ROI from employees. So even if employees are having to adopt a gamified system that they didn't personally choose, mm-hmm. it's still structurally designed to help them better track their work progress, strengthen their communication with their coworkers, notify them uh, where they stand with their goals and targets. So. Mm-hmm. Gamification isn't a distraction from the task, but it's rather a tool to help gain traction within that task. So it should never feel like an unnecessary burden tacked onto work. I, I find that gamification should be beneficial, whether it's it's chosen or if it's mandatory. So it's truly part of the process itself. It's not an added on thing. It's part of that flow. 
I, I definitely see it as an enhancer to to the task itself, uh, just something yeah. to really help people, uh, like we talked about before with with flow state. I think it's it's yeah. really geared towards helping people get to that place. Yeah, that's brilliant. So in part one of your gamification for dummies article, um, there was a line that that really stuck with me, that gamification makes progressing through hard work joyous. And that feels like an overstatement, but in the article, you bring some scientific evidence to prove that point. Can you Can you share that with us? Yeah. Well, I, I also mentioned earlier uh, Martin Seligman with the PERMA model, but mm-hmm. uh, in the particular article you're talking about, I reference the psychologist Brian Sutton Smith. He's quoted as saying, the opposite of play isn't work, it's depression. Hmm. And that's why so many games are addictive, uh, because they're able to boost that positive thinking uh, that we're capable of doing and achieving something. Mm-hmm. So contrary to popular belief, people enjoy hard work. Uh, they enjoy the release of endorphins that comes from achievement, uh, knowing that they're succeeding and bettering themselves. So uh, it's the first steps that we find the hardest when doing a task. Um, mm-hmm. There's no motivators. There's nothing to really keep us on the path. So this is why gamification is essential for many people within the workspace just to really achieve those goals. Mm-hmm. So most of our audience is human resources. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about how gamification can make HR's hard work joyous. I certainly can see it helping with learning and development, but also employee engagement, maybe wellness, recruitment, even team building. Can you help me connect the dots so as to how gamification would play into those those elements? Yeah. I mean, for all the things you've listed, I can say firsthand that gamification works best as an enhancer to practices that may already be in place. I think people are uh, hesitant to adopt gamified systems into the workplace because they're afraid the systems that uh, they're used to will be thrown out the window, uh, that they'll have to completely relearn how everything is done. Mm -hmm. Uh, And this simply isn't true. So uh, gamification, I I touched on this earlier, but it it should help tighten office practices. Um, It should help practices that may be treading water at the moment to to uh, to really bring about stronger results. So whether it be an increase in engagement from employees, a strengthening in communication between teams, uh, or a more interactive recruitment process, work is more joyous when everyone is on the same page and working harmoniously. And, mm-hmm. and gamified systems can help facilitate order across the board. Well, and to your point just a second ago, I read a story about how Google actually gamified their expense reports. So taking something that's already in place. I love that idea. I mean, is that the trick? Seeing the game gaming possibilities and even the most mundane tasks? I think seeing the gaming possibilities wherever possible is a huge help. Uh, but expense reports will never be sexy. So <laughs> I think I think the aim with those more tedious jobs should be to simply reinvigorate the task at hand. In the case of Google's expense reports. I believe they gave their employees the choice of redirecting uh, whatever travel allowance they may have uh, to either the next paycheck or future trips or a charity of their choosing. Uh, This simple act of giving employees choice and interactive element of their expense reports, uh, Mm -hmm. it's enough for employees to be proactive about submitting them. Um, When there's an element of the task that personally affects the employees, they no longer need to be chased to submit their work. Mm -hmm. They want to make sure that they get to make the choice instead of having the choice be forfeited and made on their behalf. So the, the bottom line is gamification injects meaning into what would otherwise be passive work and turns it into an interactive experience that matters. I can just feel our, our audience dialing into that with, wait, I don't have to chase people down. They'll actually do it at their own free will. <laughs> so, so tell, yeah. So tell me, how can we tie this into the idea of the employee experience overall? Like, do we start the gamification early during orientation, maybe even pre-hire before we bring those people in? Uh, Definitely. I'd say that gamification shines brightest during the hiring and onboarding process. Uh, So having a gamified hiring and training process in place can help new hires to better retain vital training uh, with the use of visual media and interactive elements. Another thing that early stage gamification can help with is the eradication of unconscious bias in the workplace. So for those that don't know what unconscious bias is, uh, it can take the form of social stereotyping in the workplace. These deeply subconscious attitudes can influence decisions such as recruitment, hiring, promotion, job advancement opportunities, retention, so on. Adding an element of anonymously structured games amongst candidates can allow for an AI to score each hidden identity candidate accurately. Uh, This is more substantial in predicting the potential of an employee performance. 
so you can marry up the the performance from these uh, these hidden games, and you can mm-hmm. put that into the interview process, and you can get a more well rounded understanding of the candidates. So I, I find that early stage gamification is um, is probably one of the the best places that you can really get started. That's huge. I never would have tied together. Um, bias and bringing on new employees and gamification together. That's that's really interesting. So yeah. how important is it for the games to actually be challenging? I think there's there's a fine line to be walked here. So if a game is too easy, the retention rates plummet very quickly. The lack of challenge results in users disengaging. Uh, mm. Whereas if a game is too challenging, you'll see a big drop in users also. Uh, gamification in the workplace is supposed to help facilitate growth and development. And if the bar is too high, it will end up demotivating employees. So when we're in a state of cheerful engagement, uh, biologically, we begin to think positive thoughts towards our own capabilities. Uh, Mm -hmm. We increase our self-worth and we begin to truly believe that we can achieve something in life. So (laughs) in in a very general sense, uh, you want the games to be just challenging enough that employees will stretch themselves, but not so challenging that it negatively affects employee outlook on their own work, if that makes That's sense. Right. Yeah, it does. It does. It's really insightful. So there are a lot of elements that will, that go into building a gamification program, starting with like the basic psychological elements of a game. What needs to be present in these games for this really to be impactful? There are several ways that I can answer this question, but I think one of the easiest is to reference uh, one of gamification's leading pioneers, Yu Kai Chao. He developed what is referred to as the Octalysis Framework. Uh, This lays out eight core motivational drivers in people. And I'm going to try and list them off right now for you. So it should be meaning, empowerment, social influence, unpredictability, avoidance, scarcity, ownership, and accomplishment. So I feel like the titles are pretty self-explanatory, but if any listeners want to know more, I'd say check out octalysisgroup.com. Let's have a little bit of a breakdown of each of those areas. So let's talk a little bit about intrinsic versus extrinsic motivators and the role that these these items play in the, the games. They're, they're a bit of a tongue twister, these ones. So mm-hmm. first off, intrinsic motivators. Um, these can be... Uh, a personal desire that comes from the user to continue mastering and exploring a task. Uh, Mm -hmm. This is what gamification can help facilitate. Because the motivation is being propelled from the user, we often refer to this as positive engagement, whereas extreme, uh, see, I told you tongue twisters. Extrinsic, right? Uh Yeah. Yeah. Is any possible known outcome which motivates the use of a gamified system. So this is more your rewards and awards, mm-hmm. the more more tangible uh, assets of gamification. So extrinsic, mo- <laughs> did it again. Extrinsic motivators uh, can be mm-hmm. strong drivers for users, but often at the expense of creative problem solving. Let's let's talk a little bit about game mechanics. That's shorthand for the structure of these programs, right? Game mechanics are the various actions, behaviors, and control mechanisms that are used to gamify an activity. Uh, The addition of game mechanics to a task allows you to layer compelling user experiences into existing activities. So Mm -hmm. these gamified activities satisfy basic human desires, creating the addictive user experience that motivate users to take certain actions. Okay. So I want to dive a little bit into the 10 prime examples of game mechanics that you shared in your article. Can you explain that a little bit with our, our listeners? Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll quickly round them off with a quick explainer. So okay. we have meaning and purpose. This could be as simple as the use of narrative in the lead up to a task uh, helps draw in the, uh, the users and create a sense of direction and purpose. Uh, leaderboards, this one's pretty self-explanatory, uh, but mm-hmm. leaderboards help cultivate the social aspect of points and badges and a sense of competition between users. Loss aversion. So this game mechanic plays into the psychology that people don't want to lose any progress and achievements. So Hmm. integrating a a time-sensitive loss mechanic can be a powerful reason for people to maintain and move ahead with the task. Feedback. So when participants in a gamified initiative are regularly notified of goals and achievements, this feedback allows them to feel a sense of progression. Uh, this can come in the form of, of notifications uh, on PCs, text messages, word of mouth, emails, whatever form of message board your office subscribes to. 
Mm. Points, points are uh, tangible, measurable evidence of accomplishment. Points help uh, users monitor their progress, both keeping score and establishing status. Um, Points are usually awarded for completing activities, sharing or contributing. Badges. Badges are often used to identify skills and expertise within a group. So usually uh, awarded to users after gathering a certain number of points. Uh, Mm. Badges are a form of of visual achievement by the the user. They provide Mm. positive reinforcement for a targeted behavior. Leveling up. Uh, creating tiers of achievement helps build an overall sense of where mm-hmm. a participant sits within a line of progression. Levels and progress bars help to map out a user's uh, progression through a system. It can be as important to see where you can go next as to where you have been. So mm-hmm. that's kind of where leveling up sits. Goals. Goals are the objectives that points, badges, and challenges all kind of stem from. Social network. Uh, we're all social beings. And relationships have a powerful effect on how we feel and what we do. So uh, having a community within a gamified initiative is where it really derives its meaning for goals, badges, competitions, and other mechanics. Uh, And the last one is challenges. So challenges help keep people interested. Just when participants might feel like they've mastered everything that there is to master, that's when you kind of up the ante and throw a challenge in there. So that's that's kind of a a quick run through of, of the 10. So do most applications utilize multiples of these? Is it, you know, are they all in there? How how does it, how does actually, how do these mechanics play into each, each different application? I would say that every, every case is different. Um, sure. You obviously want to have more than less, but sometimes mm, okay. some of these mechanics just simply don't fit within a space and that's okay. Um, mm, okay. But if you're, if you're completely devoid of these mechanics, it's not gamification. It just simply isn't. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. But yeah, you, you definitely want to have more than less. That, that's that's what I would have to say about that. Okay. All right, Mitch, we're going to take some time out for another quick break. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to the Project HR Podcast. I'm your host, Jennifer Oroqua, and our guest today is Mitch Denton of Archie Learning and Gamify. We are back. So... Mitch, let's talk about those rewards. At Projections, when we talk about implementing gamifications into some of our concepts for clients, it comes down to a question of rewards. Will they be virtual, like a community badge, or an actual perk of some sort, like a physical reward? Is there a difference in performance levels if you relate it to the kind of rewards that are in play? I would say that rewards can really make or break a system. Rewards are viewed as as a positive motivator that helps identify accomplishment. Um, This is a good thing, but too much of a good thing can become bad. So if users are being rewarded for every little action, the clarity and weight of the reward system becomes null and void. And then from that, users start to lose interest. So gamification is geared towards encouraging users to carry out specific actions and specific rewards as an indicator of growth and progression. So Mm -hmm. if users are being rewarded for everything, the gamification pathways and direction becomes muddied. The objectives and intention for the users are unclear. So the best way to avoid this issue is by keeping both the objectives and rewards simple. Mm -hmm. Uh, Choose two or three actions that you want your users to carry out. By rewarding users for carrying out those specific behaviors, you can motivate them to do exactly what you want. Um, The reward also needs to match the action though. So if you've given the users a challenge that requires them to really roll up their sleeves only to meet them with an underwhelming reward, you Mm -hmm. can actually watch the energy leave the workplace. So likewise, if you give the users an easily accomplished task and offer a reward that far exceeds that task, you'll see the negative side of competition come out in the workplace. So it may be worth asking your workplace what kind of rewards they would like to have. Um, Mm. Their answers might surprise you and you might Mm. find that what they're really after is something that's, that's quite achievable on your end and something that you can really implement. Yeah, interesting how that can motivate or demotivate. Now, we, we talked about the advantages of gamifications. Are there any disadvantages? Without trying to sound biased, I'd say theoretically there are no disadvantages to gamification as a concept, but implementation is everything. So Mm. I'd say the wheels tend to come off when people become too transfixed on a particular aspect of gamification and Mm. tend to neglect other parts as a result. Or they develop a system that is far too complex. 
things mm. like this tend to reflect badly on gamification when in actuality it it seems to be more about the uh the deploying of gamification just not going off correctly mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that makes sense so in your opinion do you know what, what companies are doing gamification right in a business context I'm a big fan of what Duolingo has done with their second language app. Um, okay. My, my, my wife's first language is Italian. Um, mm. And I've, I've wanted to learn Italian for her for some time now. But the few ways that I've gone about it have kind of crashed and burned. Um, mm. But du- Duolingo have adopted gamification completely. Um, mm. And it's won me over in the process. So their entire user interface is brimming with game mechanics throughout. They've really managed to convert the process of learning uh, a new language into a lot more of a hands-on experience. So a lot of other language apps, they're almost like a a digital version of cue cards, um, Mm. which might work for some people, definitely doesn't work for me. Mm. Um, Whereas Duolingo hits a lot of the game mechanics um, I listed earlier. Uh, They got got points and badges. Um, They they have a, a great thing with loss aversion where they have learning streaks. So if, if you're not maintaining those daily classes, you're going to lose your learning streak and you, you'd mm-hmm. be surprised psychologically how much that keeps you on the path. Yeah. Um, so I just feel like they've really nailed it, to be honest. So oh. dueling. Nice, nice. I want to check that out. So I want to shift focus a little bit to you and to your organization. Can you tell us a little bit about Archie Learning? Yeah, so Archie Learning is a gamified e-learning platform that we've developed for creatives, entrepreneurs and teachers. Um, we just want to help them build and launch their own online learning channels. So we commenced the build for Archie early last year, just before COVID-19 became the global mm-hmm. pandemic that we know mm-hmm. it to be now. And uh, even back then, we knew there was a huge need for a, a versatile online teaching tool. Uh, but we had no idea what was just around the corner. Um, right. We didn't realize that that was really going to propel us forward and push forward the need for people to adopt online courses. So Mm -hmm. we've just been working around the clock to provide a really intuitive, easy to use gamified system for both students and teachers uh, Mm -hmm. with the goal that courses will see much greater completion rates. So that's kind of been the the long and short of Archie. Yeah. Yeah. And so you also work with Gamify. Can you share with our audience what Gamify does and what your role is there? Yeah, so Gamify is a gamification marketing company. So we provide snackable game experiences that complement marketing campaigns for brands. We've also recently launched a software subscription that provides marketing agencies with the tools to develop their own gamified campaigns. Okay. But my my role there at Gamify is a content strategist. So Mm -hmm. if there's any form of text rolling around within the company, I've usually had my hand to it. Uh, just mm-hmm. helping out with SEO and SERPs and, and things mm-hmm. like that. All right. Well, how can our listeners find out more about you, about Archie Learning and Gamify? Uh, you can check out our websites, archielearning.com or gamify.com. Uh, and you can contact me at either denton at archielearning.com or denton at gamify.com. Nice. All right. I want to let our listeners know that a link to Mitch's Gamification for Dummies article will be included in this episode's companion guide, along with links to Archie Learning and Gamify. So be sure to unlock that today at projectionsinc.com slash podcast. Right now, though, Mitch, it's time for our lightning round questions. And these are questions we ask of every guest of the podcast. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. All right. So the first question is a topic showdown. In this episode, we've been talking about the value of implementing gamification in our workplaces. Now, as a gaming expert, which do you prefer for game playing at home, PC or console? I, I'm, I'm well aware that PC is superior for gaming, but I'm a diehard console fanatic. There you uh, go. Specifically PlayStation. I've had every generation model up to the PS5. So, but We're, but, we're an Xbox oh, house, but... Sorry? Or an Xbox house, but Xbox <laughs> I, I feel you. Yep. I, yeah. I, I could never. I, I'm too loyal. Um, <laughs> but funnily enough, uh, mobile gaming has really come up the inside lane in more recent years. And it's now like head and shoulders, the biggest annual contributor towards the gaming industry. So <laughs> obviously in my line of work, I dabble in a bit of mobile gaming as well. But um, mm-hmm. I, just, I found that to be quite interesting, that mobile gaming far exceeds PC and console. Yeah, very All right, next question. What is the best book that you've read recently? Uh, Have you heard of the book Quiet by Susan Cain? I have not. It's uh, it's a book dedicated to better understanding introverted people within different environments. Um, The the, the overall message 
is, is more about how introverts and extroverts need to collaborate on projects. It, it gives examples of, of like Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak creating an Apple. And it, mm-hmm. it, it, it pretty much talks about how extroverted people need to learn to kind of step down a little bit and help push introverted people up. And when they can kind of have that balance, like great things can happen. So it's, um, it's really interesting. I, I'm introverted by nature. So I find mm-hmm. that really interesting because I'm surrounded by extroverted people all the time. Yeah. So. Fascinating. I love that. So tell me, what's your favorite thing about working in gamification and instructional design? In, in a broad sense, um, I look at my team and I as problem solvers. So I really enjoy all the tinkering and planning that goes into making sure someone can fully engage with an activity. Um, that's mm-hmm. huge for me. So researching, planning, and finally executing a gamified campaign can just really feel rewarding, you know? Yeah, nice. So uh, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? This might sound controversial to some, but the customer isn't always right. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know a lot of businesses still function on the original saying of the customer is always right, Um, but this seems to be an old way of thinking for modern business. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've I've just, I've personally seen um, people that, that are experts in their field have to kind of take a knee to something that they're, they're just wholeheartedly correct in. And um, I, I just think at the end of the day, if you're, if you're going to deny expertise to make a quick sale, I, I think you're, you're kind of damaging the, uh, the culture within the workspace. I think um, the, the health of the business is, is quite important. And mm-hmm. um, I think you need to be able to, to very uh, respectfully decline or, or give alternative options and, and really explain why you believe this isn't the case to a customer. Yeah, smart. It's true. All right. Last question. Who or what inspires you? I'm assuming that most people answer this question with something like Jeff Bezos or Tony <laughs> Robbins. Uh-huh. Um, but I, I talked about before how I'm, I'm kind of introverted by nature. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm really into like personality types and, and knowing oneself better. So mm-hmm. I've done like all the major tests, Myers-Briggs, Strength Finders, Enneagram, all those types of things. Okay. So I'm a INFP under the Myers-Briggs and um, a, lot of writers and, a lot of writers and artists kind of fit the bill for INFP. So mm-hmm. there's like Tolkien and C.S. Lewis, Van mm-hmm. Gogh, Shakespeare. And so um, my, my studies are actually in screenwriting. Um, but um, even within my current work, uh, as a content strategist, I see the great value that words have and, and all of the aforementioned names. Um, mm-hmm. They're kind of like a beacon for me. Um, mm. So if there's ever moments of self-doubt, they kind of let me know that I'm in the right place. So, Yes, yeah. brilliant minds. Brilliant minds all. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining me today on this week's episode of Project HR Mitch. Well, thanks for having me. And thanks to you to our listeners. Once again, this is your reminder to grab the companion guide for this episode at projectionsinc.com slash podcast. If you'd like to be on Project HR or you know someone who would, feel free to email us at projecthr at projectionsinc.com. And last but certainly not least, make sure you never miss an episode of Project HR. I hope you'll subscribe to the podcast, drop us a line, leave us a review, or simply give us a handful of stars wherever you get your content. That's it from me for now. Let's make it a great day at work.